Hello again, and thank you for joining me for the Truth Finders class. In this session, session one of First Thessalonians, we will be discussing transform lives impact others for the sake of the gospel. And if you have watched my introduction to this class, we covered context at that time. So I'm just going to recap briefly uh, why First Thessalonians was written and uh, it'll become evident as we go through the scripture. But what I want to point out about the Thessalonian church, which I find quite interesting, and I'm, I'm absolutely in love with this as far as Paul is concerned, I feel his um, enthusiasm for the church because they were uh, very faithful to the gospel. Uh, they had received the gospel, uh, through Paul, uh, who had visited that area and established the church, and they were advocates for the gospel. They had not only seen the Holy Spirit working in their lives, but they even went the next step, which was to share the gospel in Macedonia and the surrounding areas. So Paul was extremely thrilled with the Thessalonica church and used them as the example of what true Christians look like and how they acted. Um, so let me read a few uh, context uh, just to kind of get you up to speed with what's going on with this epistle. Uh, but the Thessalonian church had a reputation, as I said earlier, for being strong advocates uh, of the faith. In his first letter to the congregation, Paul commented their uh, example of faithfulness and endurance. So this was a church that uh, he absolutely loved. Um, and keep in mind, like I said in our introduction, uh, the where Thessalonica was located at, uh, it was a prominent city that was in the Roman Empire. They had the Greeks to the south. There was a lot of pagan belief and idol worshiping going on in that area. Um, and as Christians, they were persecuted uh extremely persecuted and you'll find as Paul's writing to the Thessalonica church uh, there's verses that are evident of that so keep all that in mind as we're going through the scripture today uh, we'll actually be covering 1st Thessalonians 1 through 10 so in 1st Thessalonians 1 1 Paul and Silas and Timothy introduce themselves in verse 1 as the writers of this letter to the church of Thessalonica. And he, uh, he says, Paul and Silvanus and Timothy to the church of Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. And for the most part, Paul started most of his letters like that. Verse 2, we give thanks to God always for all of you making mention of you in our prayers constantly bearing in mind your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of our God and Father verse 4 knowing brethren beloved by God his choice of you and then verse 5a for our gospel did not come to you in word only but also in power in the Holy Spirit and full conviction. And I want to stop there for just a moment and point out again in this session that the Holy Spirit was actually the one responsible um, as he produced more and more faith and, and furthered their faith uh, as he showed himself evident daily in the Thessalonians' lives. Uh, Christian service is tangible evidence of the gospel's power. When we serve ourselves within the church, how does that benefit others? Are we not blessed in serving others, edifying the body? Uh, two is important. So faith in Christ initiates living for him. The greatest commandments are loving God and loving others. And that's found in Matthew 22, 37 through 39. Not ourselves. So this passage indicates outreach, not inward focus. And if we're followers of Christ, we aren't inwardly focused. We are 
outwardly focused to the people around us. We want to spread the good news. We want to love one another, not just our Christian uh, fellowship, but we want to reach others in Christ just as we have been reached. Um, God loved, loved us even in our iniquities and in our filthy rags. He still loves us. And so we have to look not only at our enemies, but those that are, um, in this case, in Thessalonica, uh, they uh, were to love the paganist because they once too had been pagans and worshiped false idols. So this is a very powerful statement of commitment and faithfulness and loving one another. Uh, God's power, not man, changes hearts. God's power manifests when the gospel is shared and miracles happen. It's not on our own merits that we share with others. It's through the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of the Lord is the one that has the transforming power to change lives. It convicts us of our sin. It reveals God's righteousness and the judgment against Satan. The work of the Holy Spirit is instrumental for our salvation. So let's go over the influence in verses uh, 1, 5b through 8. And I'm going to read that really quick. Uh, verse 5b, just as you know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake, you also became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Verse 7, so that you become an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Archaea. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Archaea, but also in every place your faith toward God has gone, so that we, need no, we have no need to say anything. Now, can you imagine a pastor of a church in today's society that could say that? that he has brought the gospel and that the Spirit of the Lord has indwelt the church and its people, that they would go forth in faithfulness and love and continue to keep spreading the gospel. That is what the church of Jesus Christ is, the one that spreads the gospel, the good news, and spreads it to other people. And uh, through the work of the Holy Spirit, this, the church grows. So we ask, how do godly models help shape our faith? Well, Paul and his companions' conduct was compelling. It warranted imitating. So think about that one for just a minute. Jesus Christ is the ultimate standard and model for believers. And believers should be and seek godly examples of Christian living. So... The value of a good reputation, what is its role in influencing others for Christ? Well, the Thessalonian neighbors near and far were favorably impacted by their example of faith. Believers are called to be Christ-like in character, conduct, and conversation. And then others are drawn to or dissuaded from receiving the gospel through both the collective and individual behaviors of the Christian community. And how many times have we heard from non-believers, non-Christians, that we're hypocrites, that we say one thing and do another. Um, so we have to be very cautious in our behavior towards not only one another, but towards the world as well. If we don't, if we look like the example of the rest of the world and act the way the rest of the world acts, what do we have that is in us that will help point them towards Christ? Well, we don't have anything that will help point them towards Christ. Uh, we're not behaving in such a way to point them and allow the Spirit of the Lord to uh, convict and point them towards our Lord and Savior. So Paul emphasized in um, 1 Thessalonians 1, 9 through 10 the, 
the Thessalonians had turned from idols and now served the one true God. And as a result, they had hope for a future forgiveness because of the resurrection of Jesus. So let's discuss, or let's read, uh, if you'll read with me, 1 Thessalonians 9 through 10. For they themselves report about us what kind of reception we had with you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. So, we ask the question, why do you suppose many are challenged with turning from idols to the true and living God? Well, godly repentance is to turn away from sin and turn towards God. Christ came to earth to provide humanity and an opportunity to turn from sin and be reconciled to God the Father. And today, idols are more than statues. And as we know, it can be in the terms of money. It can be our children can turn into idols. Uh, you know, what we drive can be turned into idols. Our jobs can turn into idols. Our spouses can turn into can be turned into idols. So to admire or have devotion for anything or anyone more than God is considered idolatry. Uh, what does it mean to actively wait for Jesus' return? Well, Christ's promise return gives believers hope and a future. Jesus instructed his followers to spread the gospel throughout the earth. And that's the Great Commission found in Matthew 28. Waiting is not idleness. Believers are to actively pursue performing God's kingdom work. Okay, so how does all of this that we read today apply to us? How can we use the scripture from verses 1 through 10 in the Thessalonian church? How can we use that to apply to our lives today? Because if we don't use application then what we have just read is just something from a good book. So we now have to apply that to our lives. So what role are you willing to play to make an impact for the sake of the gospel? That's really the question. What, what role are you willing to play? Well, the Thessalonian Christians modeled the importance of demonstrating Christ-likeness, intentionally and consistently. Every believer has an opportunity to impact others for the gospel. And notice that word is an opportunity to impact. We don't save people, but we do have an impact on those around us. Sharing and spreading the gospel is a willful act of those who've experienced its transforming power. So the Thessalonians not only grasped the gospel, but they committed themselves to it, were transformed, found salvation, were redeemed, and they grew in their faith through the help of the Holy Spirit, and they spread the gospel out. So today's lesson is nothing more than an evangelistic type of outreach lesson uh, that we can learn from the Thessalonians. Uh, the personal challenge, I think, for this week is identify one individual that you can intentionally influence for Christ this week. Ask God to show you opportunities among your family, friends, and co-workers. Now, if you're from an older generation like me and you're no longer working and you're retired, um, one of the things that you can always do is share with family members. And if not that, and the opportunity doesn't rise, we go out and we buy food, we buy clothing, uh, we go out to restaurants. There's always a door if you pray uh, for the Holy Spirit's presence or direction. There's always a door that will be opened up for you to witness and share the gospel with people. And I think it's our obligation. It's great commission 
Matthew 28, that we go and spread the good news of the gospel and what we have and what we have found in our hope, not only for ourselves, but the hope for others. Um, so that's, I think, this week's personal challenge to you. Uh, next week, we're going to um, be covering 1 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 12. So if you want to read ahead before you come to class, that would be great. And the theme of next week will be called Shared. So let me close this in prayer. Um, Father God, we just thank you for this day that you've given us. You give us an abundance of your grace and mercy, and we thank you for that, Lord. I personally thank you for your salvation and redemption. As I am a sinner greater than anyone that I am teaching to right now, and I thank you for the grace and mercy that you have shown towards me. Lord, I ask in your name that you help me to speak to others that are around me, Whatever your will may be, you know the people that I need to speak to and share with. May you boldly help me to boldly proclaim your gospel and your message of hope. Because it is a hope for others in this time of uh, tribulation and testing. And so, uh, Father, I pray uh, not only just for myself, but I also pray for the listeners who listen to this session uh, that they would be empowered by your word, that they would be empowered by your spirit, and that we would go forth and proclaim the gospel in Jesus Christ's name. I give thanks to you again for this day that you've given us, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you, folks. We'll see you again next week.